I would disagree that this is a um, typical felony murder, especially in the state of Indiana. If you take a look at the case law in the state of Indiana, in fact, it's absolutely atypical. The typical is when the victim is normally a third party, um, not an accomplice. And the distinction is this, and the real question here is, under Indiana law, this would have only been an A felony burglary, a difference between 45 years and 20 years if, um, during the commission of the crime, a person was seriously injured, except for one of the defendants. So the point here is, is why, if you're analyzing burglary, is there an exception under Indiana law if a person injured is one of the accomplices, but that same exception doesn't apply for felony murder? And so the whole point of this trial was, I personally did not have a real hope because I agree with the juror that in fact under the law they had to find felony murder once they got the burglary. The issue is is on the appeal and the only way you get this kind of case to appeal is by going through a trial and unfortunately I think that's where the case is and what we're looking at is changing the law <clears throat> under appeal and or having the legislature change it because it clearly I think is absurd to apply it under these facts and that's what I wanted to say. Okay. Thank you. Sonny, any response? Yeah, I, it, it is typical felony murder. It is typical felony murder. You see it all over the country. Um, the, the fact that a co-defendant, a co-conspirator dies during the commission of a felony makes no difference. It makes no difference whether it's the victim. It makes no difference whether or not it's a co-defendant, co-conspirator. It's what is foreseeable. And, and I think <clears throat> their mothers, and I'm a mother as well, have to understand that they must be held accountable. For the crime they committed. All right, Sonny, let me ask you... Which is you, felony murder. Let me ask you a question right before we go to break. Uh, you refer to these three as boys. Uh, you, you see them, you look at them, you refer to them as boys. You haven't referred to them as men. The fact that they are teenagers, I know neurologically that their brains are not fully developed at this point. Is this too harsh to hold these boys accountable for 50 plus years for what happened in this case? You know, I, I agree with your assessment, Dr. Phil, that you know, and, and I've seen all of the studies, and I've spoken to uh, Sanjay Gupta at CNN about this very issue, um, criminalizing behavior um, under the age of 25. And we know that the brain really fully develops in terms of criminal consequences at the age of 25. I do think 50 years is harsh. I think it's very harsh. Um, I, I think if there is any thing that should be done here is perhaps um, to attack the length of the sentence. I think that when we sentence criminals, when we sentence boys, young men, I, I, I do think that age should be something that is taken into account.